Greetings everyone and welcome back to TNO, the last days of Europe in which we're playing as the GGR. So last time, we had quite the grand conspiracy to overthrow our rule. <clears throat> Obviously we cr crushed it and we'll talk about that in a little bit. We have comments to go through, but let's first go to the Volkshalle speech. Since the time he was a little boy, Martin Bormann was terrified of speaking. Large family gathering, singing hymns at school, addressing his classes, a fear would seep into his veins like hot oil, seizing his tongue and refusing to let go as the sweat poured down his clammy forehead. As a member of the SA, Bormann was content to listen. As Rudolf Hess's deputy, he was comfortable to let his oafish boss do the talking. As a chief of the party chancellery, his speeches were punctuated with stammering, grammatical mistakes, and nervous coughs. Even after following the Big Daddy leader with fanaticism and learning how every hand gesture and verbal tick could send crowds of thousands into an uproar, his attempts at replication proved more awkward than inspiring. When Borman strode to the Vauxhall podium, eyes scanning over the thousands of terrified faces, he felt the last of his fear dissipate. Gentlemen, he boomed, his strong voice echoing throughout the gigantic hall, I stand before you as a victorious Big Daddy. Having uncovered treason within the Orpo, the hair on the high echelons of government itself, I acted with ruthless efficiency to purge those traitors from the face of the German uh, Reich. He punctuated the last five words by slamming his fist into his open palm. Let the Jews fear us, let the Bolsheviks fear us, let the capitalists fear us. His index finger pointed and shook aggressively. All enemies of the state will be executed without mercy. Our nation is unified, economy is strong, and our, nation is, and our army is mighty. Let the world see that Germany is a land forever sacred, forever free, forever without want. His screaming had reached a fevered pitch that sent goosebumps, goosebumps up his arms of even those at the back of the hall. Ein Volk, <clears throat> Ein Reich, Ein Führer Sieg Heil, and then Sieg Heil. Oh, we get new focus tree? Well, I'd like to complete Heat of the Desert. Oh, man. Does that mean we can't do... Oh, because I asked you guys yesterday whether we should do uh, All Men Who Bend Their Will versus Get Rid of the Troublesome. And overall, there's just a little bit, just tiny bit more support for All Men Who Bend Their Will. Just a little bit more support, so... Oh, oh. Ooh. Hold on. Oh. End of the ride. Well, god dang it. <sighs> well, if you want, like to about this, basically it was the second night of the Long Knives. Oh man, come on. Uh, I don't like how sometimes the focus tree forces you to go down certain, you know, paths. So, like, you do you do your focus, you get an event, and then it changes your focus tree. There's nothing we can really do about that. Is it worth getting this to get more? I guess we can keep doing it. It'll be fine. We'll keep doing this one. But then we'll do, I guess, asserting our control, I suppose. Without an intervention, flames will continue to spread and engulf everything in their unquenchable thirst for destruction. Burning out the rot within the Reich is the only first is only the first step into consolidating our power. We must establish total control over the state, party, and Wehrmacht and society in general. Once the Führer has submitted his gains, few will deny his status as the most powerful man in German history. <sighs> Big sadness. Now things are going on over here, which is fine, and actually we can't even do this stuff too. Yeah, I'm clicking on it, but. There's nothing we can do. We have enough political power for it, but... Oh, well. Yeah. Uh, seize oil reserves? Well, not much we can really do. African Cabal? Seems kind of... Not much is really going on down there, but... It is what it is. And... Get some reserves if we can, and then we shall do, probably, after asserting our control, deal with the aftermath. Development, transformation, evolution. The change is to suffer, but as we suffer, we do grow stronger. The bloody aftermath of the Unternehmen and Adler must be cleaned, cleaned up if we are to force all German eyes forward towards a hopeful future and away from our murky past. Sure, building projects will begin to repair buildings and roads damaged by the fighting in Germany and most major cities. Streets will be quite literally have to be clean of blood and bodies disposed of. The organization of the party... Uh, and the Wehrmacht will have to be reshuffled with absolute precision, most importantly of all. Germany must return to a world stage, looking stronger and more ruthless than ever. At least finally, industrial expertise and army profession goes up a little bit, so. Heil's head, they're right. Thomas was a bit old for cartoons now. He had a younger brother, though, Roland. And his mother was always telling him to spend more time with a kid. It wasn't that Thomas was, had anything against him, and of course he loved his own little brother, but Roland was just such a kid. He didn't... He did nothing but play with his toys and watch dumb cartoons, and Thomas didn't want to see, be seen doing anything so immature at his age. Most of the time when Thomas and Roland hung out, hung out, Thomas would just read quietly or do homework while his brother watched the shows. The only time Thomas paid any attention was when one show in particular was on his own childhood show favorite. Roland seemed to like it just as much as he did, and hanging out with his brother gave Thomas an excuse to see where the show had gone. Mostly it was the same dribble, the perfect good guy Borman facing off against, against a bunch of cartoonishly evil villains and always winning. 
This time the episode was about the oil crisis. Bormir was helping the German army fight against his vague enemies in the Middle East, riding through the sand on a white horse with a golden lance. The show looked different from when he used to watch it every day. Still, though, it brought back memories for Thomas and made him feel like a kid again. When Heil Zeit started, the minute of what Thomas now realized was pure propaganda that ended off each episode. Thomas wasn't sure if he was going to join in. He knew Roland would. Getting to scream at the top of your lungs for a minute without your parents getting mad at you was to have the appeal of the Heil Zeit. But for Thomas, it was more about nostalgia. Would it still feel as good as it always did before? Would any of his friends figure out uh, it somehow and pick on him just for acting like a little kid? Thomas knew that Borman wasn't just a cartoon hero now, too. He was in charge of the country, and Thomas had heard his parents sharing a few choice words about the man over coffee in the mornings. When the Heil Zeit started, though, and Roland joined in with a Heiling as a montage of portraits of Borman scrolled by in rapid succession. Succession. Thomas felt he had to put at least one in. This had been his favorite show for years, after all, waiting until the very end, when the last portrait of the Fuhrer lingered for a few extra seconds. Thomas bonded with his little brother and gave one last Heil to his childhood hero, Heil Bowman. For old time's sake. Ah. The economy. Still not doing too bad, though. The debt has been controlled, which is very, very good. And Turkey. Why does Turkey own so much of this? Maybe we should own some of this. That's alright. That is definitely okay. What are we building right now, actually? Road and Veen, and uh, well, we built a lot of civilian factories. I'll tell you what. <laughs> oh man, we have built a lot. But regardless, uh, oh, a trip to the land of degeneracy, Switzerland. Bowman asked. He eyed Breka with disdain. He was a pretentious fool taking up valuable time. You want to go to Switzerland to make a satirical sculpture? Yes, mind you. I will also need some other sculptors arrested for degeneracy to help me craft such intentionally degenerate art. We'll make a model of the average Swiss person, showcasing them or showcasing them in all their glory. Then we'll send it to the Swiss government as a gift, pretending it's good. Bormann interrupted into a fit of laughter. Breaker chuckled back awkwardly. He struggled to contain the mix of severe anger and intense fear he felt for Bormann. Breaker wanted to punch the dude in the face, but at the same time wanted to flee for his life. Bormann smiled. That's a great idea. Take her <clears throat> twenty or so degenerates for this. Be back as soon as possible. I'm excited to see this Breaker side. Thank you. Mein Führer, he said. Bricker rushed out the door of the Reich's cancel It was happening. The idiot had given him permission. Bricker could barely contain his excitement as he prepared for a contemporary excursion to Switzerland. Mein Führer, an intern slammed as he burst into Bormann's office. Bricker's defected. Bormann shouted a curse. He had expected this, but it enraged him all the same. He banged his fist against the desk loudly. Seething with rage, Bormann spoke a single command. Cover this up. Send the Orpal after Bricker. I will never want to hear that dude's name ever again. Oh, we have no cipher. We have cipher stuff, huh? Well, it looks like... <clears throat> Zukov will not be a problem for us in uh, the long run here. Because the West Russian, the Revolutionary Front, well, they're not doing so well. <clears throat> but uh, Papa Yagoda is looking kind of strong. Well, not nearly as strong as us, of course, naturally, but still. Still, still, still. And we'll be dealing with the aftermath with Einfuhr. The enemy is perished. Total control has been solidified. The potential chaos following such a drastic series of events has been quelled in its infancy with a swift Cleanup initiatives launched by the state. <clears throat> the party, military, and corporations, and the people are fully subservient to the fear's might. With no existing opposition in any form, Martin Bormann has surpassed even Adolf Hitler as the most powerful leader of Germany. Here we go. A little bit more, less, or a little bit less construction spending. It ain't much, but it'll, it'll work. Advanced jet cast is nice. Uh, we already have or worked on the helicopters, which is very, very good. Maybe we could grab some military police, perhaps? That'd be good. A couple comments, though. Uh, someone was asking, or actually I thought of this as well in the last episode as we were talking and going through it. I don't know what's going to happen, but it sounds like there maybe should be an event for like um, a Nazi Chernobyl event where nuclear reactors just go poorly, we'll say. So I always thought that would be kind of cool, you know, a Nazi Chernobyl event. It can be in Ukraine, too, or awesome. So, redevelop the nation. The thousand-year Reich continues to evolve and grow with each passing year. There's much infrastructural work to be done in the Reich, both to ensure the legacy of the 20th century, Germany, and for the areas of the future, and to provide for more work initiatives for the working class. The growth around projects must be continued and must be taken even further than before to truly transform the Reich. That looks pretty good. More construction speed, less factory goods, or consumer goods, consumer goods factory, so. Keep slashing. That would be quite delightful. 11 days left, 10 days left, not bad. Actually, that's almost roughly a month. <sighs> I, I'm glad we were able to manage a budget, though. And as a reminder, this is a canonical path for Germany um, in TNO. Bormann wins the Civil War, probably does a second night of the Long Knives, so. However, he can't live forever, just like Daddy Hitler, so. All around me are familiar faces. Hans looked at the uh, wall of the building, Bormann. Bormann all over it. Propaganda posters were as numerous as bricks on the wall. All of them featured a face of Bormann looking quite proudly upon the Reich. It was bearable for one wall, but all of them? It seemed like Bormann was gazing upon all of Germania from the posters, glaring at every single one of the citizens with a fiery intensity. 
Hans examined one of them. It was a picture of Bormen staring at a picture or a plane ticking off to bomb who knows where. Bomb degeneracy to nothingness. Join the Luftwaffe today, read the text. They all said something like that. The message wasn't to join the Luftwaffe or to sign up for the army or to salute the poster. They were all reminders. Behave or die. That was what they all really said. Hans suddenly felt intimidated. He ran off the gaze of Bormen following him. The Fuhrer is always watching you. And that must be a real picture of him. Nice little arm bad he's got, but he's not very happy. Hmm. Then again, if you were leader of Germany, would you really be happy? Maybe for a little bit. Yeah. So one of the other comments said, It seems like the devs kind of sort of forgot, or kind of left out, the Middle Eastern oil operations and such, since we, I mean, we've done great. We've done really, really great here. I mean, we victory, 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 victory. We won incredibly quickly in Iran, Egypt, Arabia, or really Yemen, Iraq. So, yeah, it does seem like... The devs left it out just a little bit, but there's probably a good reason for that. So, I stopped him. In the 50s, Albert Speer and the Reich's Ministry of Economics instituted a system of slavery. A dam of rotting wood against an ever-growing tide of economic collapse. At last, the final truces of the system will be abolished. More work means richer working class, which means increased consumer spending and a market resurgence. The last of the slaves will be transferred to camps, ghettos, and cities throughout the Eastern Europe to live a free life of indentured servitude. Ah. Very good. Ooh, anything else here? Probably not too much. Oh, yeah, all this stuff. And it's, it's, it's such a waste doing that now, since it always goes back down to zero. So that might get rectified later on. And actually, domestic spending. Um, honestly, we've already built up... We've literally built every single road up to level 10 in Germany, so that would do nothing for us, except take away civilian factors and cost money. But we can do this one. I, like, I think that's pretty good. All right, looking pretty good with this, and it is 1971, so let's grab some better infantry equipment or equipment improvements. Honestly, the the Gross Afrika Reichstadt is still here, so I'm not sure he's supposed to fall apart, isn't he? I haven't done anything for him, like I'm not really sure, but oh, there's still Spain, but still, it's very weird. So yeah. That sucks that the devs... You can, Like I said earlier, this is... By getting like 1970, you can see cracks in the game or the mod where the devs just had to, you know, cut stuff or, you know, not do stuff yet. Stuff is still in development, I'm sure. So, A miracle cure. Put that in and pop it in and you'll soon rejoin the fray. Hey, hey, hey. Be stronger than a hundred men. Watch your troubles go away. Hey, hey, hey. Stay awake. Stay alert when you're sick, when you're hurt. There's a cure. It's not a sin. And take Pervitin. That catchy little jingle has been one of the frequently on the minds of the Reich's citizens as Pervitin. As one of the most, as one of the implements by which our brave German pilots won the war, it is made available for public consumption. The medication, which is rumored to heal everything from cancer to the hangnail, has hit the market with a splash. Regardless of the truth of these rumors, many of which doctors dispute, few can doubt how excited many of these art afflictions are. After all, such a useful item will surely massively improve the quality of life for many citizens of the GGR. A uh, miracle cure for people that just really needed more than a few miracles. However, Perpetin seems to have something that few of these people that could ostensibly benefit can get their hands on. After all, one could only acquire Perpetin with a doctor's prescription, and those prescriptions oddly seem to only find their ways into the hands of the rich and powerful, especially those with positions within the NSDAP. Perhaps they were more susceptible to some sort of illness? I suppose I'll take an aspirin. Oh, look at this. Our expenses will decrease. Weltabstadt. The original construction of Hitler's vision of Germania was halted due to the 1950s economic crash. Now, the torch is passed to Bormann. With the economy strengthening due to Hermann Josef's Abs ingenuity in running the Reich's Ministry for Economics, the Führer will officially order the construction to continue, and stress his own role in helping Hitler with the designs in the 40s. A lie, of course, but the people will not know otherwise. Uh, RMVP will naturally leave Speer's influence by the wayside in all reports about the reconstruction efforts. And more building stuff. Yay! More civilian factories! And expenses will decrease? Very good. Very, very good. Oh, well, let's see. Someone asks, what happens when Hermann Goring, if he were to win the Civil War, would... What would happen if he took over Iceland and Greenland? Well, I'm sure you can find that on YouTube. I'm not really sure what happens, but someone has done a playthrough where you can see all the Goring Rex commissariats, including America, so... I'll play as Goring someday. Sneer of the Cold Command. Bar Martin Borman strolled through the podium on, with his chest puffed out and grabbed it with two firm hands. Calm washed over him as the crowd stared back in anticipation. He'd never been a man of pomp or grandeur. He remembered a conversation with his late wife explaining how he'd rather be thrown into an unmarked ditch than given a gr grand delinquent funeral. The brown party uniforms were pretentious, the giganticism or giganism of Germania's buildings grotesque, the various metals and portraits and symbols denoting nothing but pretentiousness. Yet it was all necessary. 
Necessary for the changing of the hearts and minds of the people. Necessary for maintaining the Reich's legacy. How will the future generations of Aarons look back upon Bormann's years as Germany's triumphant leader? The thought gave him intense pressure. Or immense pressure. Adolf Hitler, the first comrade, forger of the Third Reich, Martin Bormann is its savior. Ladies and gentlemen, he boomed into the microphone. The incompetence of the formerly corrupt economic ministry spearheaded by none other than the traitor Albert Speer is responsible for the economic crisis caused by slavery. My gradual disintegration of the slavery program shall come to a head today. I hereby declare as we fear that slavery will be abolished. A glorious future awaits the working class. Pick up your shovels and feed your families. Great projects await the German race. See Heil may look on look at my works, ye mighty and despair. We actually get less construction speed and less output. We get more taxable population, better monthly poverty change, as well as industrial expertise. Oh boy, I'm excited. That is exciting. Anything else here? Um, not really. I mean, I would love to do this. 100%? Good. Let's go to workforce. Almost 90 million. Bug political enemies. Well, already 95% stability, so. Ah, goodbye, African Cabal. Middle Eastern Flames doesn't seem like there's going to be much there. We can still do Antecker satellites and such, though. Uh, next research will be done in 11 days, which would be, be nice. Uh, so, some of you guys actually said that, or recommended, or put in the comments, that the devs could have made the coup more subtle against Borman. Some of you guys said it made him really overpowered before the coup, or before, um, you know, things had happened. You know. But, the Union Resurgent, but regardless, regarding, you know, what the devs have done, some of you guys said it was similar to a cultural revolution that was seen in China in the 60s, somewhat, maybe, maybe maybe not so much that one, but a cultural revolution nonetheless, as well as basically a Red Purge, or a Great Red Purge that happened in the Soviet Union in the 30s, so that's basically the same thing that happened, and some of you guys weren't content with that, but we'll see what happens. The devs probably will clean that up a little bit more, but the Union Resurgent, wow. Above all, that'd be really cool if we went to war with them. Hmm, maybe I could pull a few strings and maybe we could try that. I don't know, we'll see what happens. Actually, we got some. I don't know, what happens if I throw on even scout helicopters? You get slightly less recovery, more defense, breakthrough, soft attack, hard attack, recon, slightly more supply, less organization, more fuel capacity, more HP. You know, screw it, we'll do it, alright? Uh, we don't have any scout helicopters though. That's never stopped me before. Mm, transport helicopters? We need some support helicopters. Uh, where are those? Supports? Scouts, there they are. There you go. We have enough factories that you can, we can go and do that. And go ahead and do that. That should be more than enough. Cool. Yep, definitely near the end of this. Let's see. Ah, welcome to the machine. It has been a week since Antonin had been officially declared a freed slave. What was he now? A citizen of the Reich? A second class one? Was he anything really that wasn't just a number added to labor statistics? He was given his own shoddy apartment and his status was changed to employee, but to him, the liberation didn't feel like anything special. That morning, he had been looking around for Alexei. As it had been three days since he disappeared, and while he initially assumed that Alexei had some sort of injury and had to recover, Antonin was starting to get concerned. Though many didn't recognize the name, one did, a woman named Susanna. Can I ask you what happened to Alexei? Antonin asked, feeling a word that he never had a thought would have he would have felt again after the Germans shoved him into the Litzmannstadt and left the ashes of his past to rot. Susanna seemed hesitant to respond, looking away for a moment. Antonin's gaze, however, fire, fierce and unrelenting, forced her to look at him. He's been relocated. Got free three days ago and was transported to Poland proper. Something about the tone of her voice struck her struck her as off, and he could feel traces of a concealed truth. He, he acted on instinct rather than thought when he continued talking, and wasn't sure, certain why. That's not all. He almost shouted, and Susanna flinched. So something else has happened. Well, did he get there safely? She was tempted to run, but knew something But something about Antonin possessed a sort of die-hard trait to know. He... <clears throat> I already got sick on the way there. Antonin's breath became, a hitched, became hitched. Susanna relented for a moment before continuing. From what I heard, there was nothing to treat him with. I'm sorry. Antonin's head hurt as hard as if he had a migraine. Nodding emptily towards Suzanne, he looked at his shaking hand. Something about the scenario reminded him of a memory he had never wanted to dig up again. He knew a young man once when he 
himself was younger. Though he wasn't a man, merely a boy, catching sickness while crammed in a train car full of people like him, then... Then, dear goodness, God, dear God, Alexei, just like Sisman, or Simon. Oh boy. Oh boy. Do we have another one here? No. Uh, very soon. After that, we shall do uh, societal engineering. As Hitler said of the masses, their intelligence is small, but their power for getting is enormous. The total reordering of German society in the Aryan mind has continued to ramp up in speed since the fateful day in 1933. But only a genius could hope for could continue Hitler's work in this regard. Fortunately for the Reich, Bormann is one such genius, with unlimited power at his disposal. The fear will increase the brainwashing of the German people with two specific goals in mind, the total elimination of the church and the emergence of the cult of personality. Ah, advanced APCs. Very, very good, very good. And then, after that, we shall get some better radioactive armor. Now, we'll go ahead and do some of this. More land and attack. 30%. Holy cow, that's intense. You know what? This is the end of the Borman run, and it's canonical. And, technically, whenever TNO2 drops, probably by like 2025. Which is going to take years. Maybe we should have a little bit of fun with the, um... The Reds over here, we'll say. Maybe we should have a little bit of fun. Uh... Yeah. Unless there's a nuclear war that happens. Then that wouldn't be very fun. But I can't imagine Yogoda has a very large nuclear stockpile. So, maybe we'll, maybe we'll have a little bit of fun once we finish the focus tree. How about that? And we actually use our planes very effectively, too. Uh, just in case, everyone go ahead and train. Go ahead and train as... Wow. Yeah, we didn't, even t we didn't do anything about Burgundy. But like, back in the other part of the focus tree, the one... Not the last focus tree before this one, but the one before that, when we were trying to get the Golden Age of the German Reich, and had the great game with Italy, and such... We could have done Burgundy stuff, but there's nothing we can do about Burgundy. That needs to be cleared up. We need to know what's going to happen with Burgundy, because it seems like it's just been left to the wayside. And as you can see right now, there's no more things about getting more conservative support, which is fine, but still. Gal Wagner? Why not? Civilian austerity? Hmm. Is there any resistance? Of course not. Of course not. Uh, we also courted these air islands, too, so... I guess there's not really much that we can do. Ah, uh, you know what? We'll do this one, I suppose. Intelligence must be secured regarding that stuff. Anything else? Domestic infrastructure would be nice, but, you know, we've already done with that, so. Uh, research? Yeah, four days, three days. Yeah. Uh, Jugendstadt des Führers. Adolf Hitler's dream of turning Linz into a German Budapest shall be actualized. All halted construction in Linz shall continue, and the Austrian city itself will be massively expanded in accordance with Bormann's most trusted architects and designers. A statue of Hitler will be placed in the city so that he may watch over his vision for a thousand years. According to the Brown Kaiser. Also have a cup of Kaiser. Kaiser? Coffee here. Keeps nice and warm. <clears throat> Galen laced his slender fingers together and waited the fear's response with a sinking heart. He watched on as the men's face contorted into disbelief and fury. Are you trying to deceive me, Reinhard? Bowman finally snapped, throwing the reports back to the Oppo chief's face. This is antidotal nonsense. Much research has gone into these reports. Galen replied calmly, the German people are overwhelmingly opposed to polygamy, moral morally and culturally. <clears throat> of course you would say that. Oh, my bad. Uh, Bowman laughed bitterly, his furious face twisting into a smug and imperiousness. Galen so turned dried, long tried to suppress rumors of his Catholicism. My decision is final. I'm legalizing polygamy as of today. It is within man's nature to spread his seed and bolster his race. M Monogamy is Judeo-Christian nonsense designed to stifle Aryan, de Aryan democratics. Uh, don't worry, Reinhardt. I will lead by example. I will be married to the fatherland as many actresses as I want. <clears throat> the two roimy eyes embedded in Bormann's wrinkles burn with lecherous malice. Galen felt his lip curling, and influx of female secretaries and assistants had been hired by Borman. Their attractive faces etched with a haunting numbness. The fear did not keep his conquest secrets, and a meeting would, rare, would rarely end without Borman boasting about his latest movie star he had seduced, whether they wanted it or not. The brown Kaiser, they whispered in the dark quarters of the Reichstag. The Reichskanzler was his throne, and Germania was his court. The Aryan rest shall grow ever more. Oh. And there was reports, like, back before, like, when TNO first came out, there were other reports of uh, Borman getting... Let's say a little bit more raunchy with a little bit more people, especially women. Uh, back in the back in the early days of TNO, or the release days, I should really say of TNO. So, yeah, no oh, great. But happy 1972, everyone. Hope you're having a great year. We'll be doing quite well, hopefully ourselves. But there's no guarantee. There's no hope under the black sun. So, uh, civilian manufacturing, absolutely. Next research we done fast enough. After that, we shall do oh, a little bit of auto saving first. G the debt is two hundred sixty-eight. Not bad. Mass propaganda. 
Uh, with the appointment of the new Reich's Minister for Propaganda and Public Enlightenment, Herr Leopold Guterer, an overwhelmingly huge propaganda campaign will begin. The, print, the printed press, radio, TV, plays, and cinemas will all exalt the Reich, the fear and the strength of the orthodox conservative National Socialism. People can be made to see paradise as hell and to consider the most wretched sort of life as paradise. We lose political power. We actually get more po recruitable population and stability. That seems quite a bit of population for mass propaganda, I'll be honest. That seems kind of a bit excessive, but maybe that's just me. I don't know. I'm not a dev. I just play games and post them on my channel. And if you're still watching, thanks for watching. <clears throat> Passive defense is fine with me. Cool. And I do want to get to the plane stuff, because we do. Have, we should have quite a few planes here. Uh, oh, news from the Middle East. Order restored to the Arab world with the help of the German steel. But Atis prevail in the Middle East. Chaos. Germania, two, 2400 hours. 21st of February, 1972, by T. Siebert. Oh, look at that. It is the right day. Well, close to the right day. By permission of the foreign ministry himself and the reliable observers throughout the region, the Volkischer Beobachter proudly proclaims that our Beatus allies have defeated the insidious forces standing against them. German steel, sweat, and blood have proven to be the decisive factor. Now consolidated in the United Arab Republic, our beloved Führer has already proclaimed the formalization of official diplomatic relations and expressed his hope that soon the entrepreneurs of the Reich will do the pot in deepening the long, fresh, and fruitful relationship. This day is a victory not just for the Arabian race, but for the Aryan one as well. Our to pay off our growth will increase great we get exactly 214 political power and 7.1 uh, base war support that is because of the influence or how much involvement we got and the more involvement you got or involved you got with the Middle East the more benefits you would reap of course if you didn't do well that would be very good but whatever we need more fighters holy cow yeah we need way more fighters for what we need here could you guys get down in half? Everyone here, boom, boom, boom. Oh, uh, we have attack helicopters, carrier fighters. That's all fine with me. I don't really care. There you go. Um, anywhere else? Do we have extra planes? Yes. Western Russia fighters, attack helicopters. That's good. I was getting a base a few 100s. Um, over here, let's crank this up. Everyone's going to need stuff. And since I don't th believe we're going to be sending people out, so there you go. Axel von dem was a Busha. Oh, uh, ten percent movement bonus on that. You know what? Go right ahead. You're already fast enough. <sighs> yeah, I, 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 I probably want to take these guys out by the end of this episode. Anyone else have upgrades? No. Okay. Well, they're all maxed out on upgrades. Do that. Mass propaganda, followed with reviving Kirchenkampf. Closing down the Protestant Catholic churches and arresting their most outspoken priests was the only the first step in Bormann's master plan. The institutional destruction of the church will be completely cemented with anti-Christian propaganda, shaming the religious and reforming Christians, and worshipping their party in fear instead. Whenever a cruel deity watches over Germany, it will not miss the whining of the weak. You get a whole civilian factory. Go figure. At this point, research doesn't really matter too much. We can grab some more of this, though. Passive defense is nice. 261, not bad. So we should know more about these guys too, so. Not that many divisions, a lot of manpower, but that manpower is probably going to get all sapped away when we're good and ready with it. Good. More inflammation. Nine days for Scott Helicopter 2s? Nice. Fighters, yeah, we don't need more fighters. Um, the advanced jet fighters, yeah, I'll do that. We have more than enough of this stuff. I think we'll be okay. Go down to three. Go down to one. Uh, I'm gonna keep that like that. We have over 400,000 weaponry. Go and do that too. That'd be good. More casts. More transport helicopters. More main battle tanks. You know, you know the like. And then connect it all. The mega projects have only just begun. Bormann will expand or the expansion of the Breitsperbahn network to cover all the German cities with the goal of creating one enormous me megapolis. The right continues to rise in might and glory, and the influx of working class Germans, Germans to all these jobs will cause an uproar in the economy that no nation in the world will have anticipated a few years prior. More GDP growth, a little bit more debt, infrastructure. Ah, as so, the clock moves closer to midnight. TNO2, it sounds like whenever TNO2 comes out, it's going to be a very short. It can be a very short. Uh, a little spell in this mod. Because <laughs> if everyone has nuclear weapons, well, there's going to be a lot of dead people. Attack helicopters? How many attack helicopters do we have? Do we have enough? 500? Jesus Christ. It hurts our armor, but look at that breakthrough. 157 more breakthrough. Jesus. Bad words. 
Bad words all around. Anyways, um, motorized. That's a little bit better. I mean, that's enough armor anyways for us. Uh, let's see, infantry divisions. They're only 18 combat with. They're not that strong. Throw us some more, uh, uh these guys on there. That'll be fine. Anti-tank. Ooh. Signal companies, do we have enough support equipment? Yeah, we do. That's fine. I'm really getting... Our, oh, we need more. Army XP, that sucks. Anything else here? There you go. Redevelop the nation is gone. And we'll go ahead and do Night Vision, which will be nice. It's 72, so we might as well get even better weapons, right? Ah, very good. The People's Sphere. Unlike the beloved Adolf Hitler, Bormann had struggled to maintain genuine love and admiration from the German people. According to Orpo reports, he is viewed as a little more than a powerful administrator following the task set by the late Führer. The people are to truly believe in their nation and their people, so too must they believe in their leader. Their terror and respect sweeping throughout society following the second night of the Long Knives must be harnessed into a new cult of personality initiated by the RMVP, which will dedicate itself to portraying Bormann as a genius and a visionary rivaling Hitler himself. So mass propaganda with the Führer's people. Even less political power, more mobilization, speed, stability, counterintelligence, Heil Zeit, via. A German teenager channeled resurfaced. Wasting time for an, a while before his friends arrived for the nice plans, he saw, he saw a show playing that he used to watch all the time when he was a kid. Some crappy cart propaganda cartoon with a whole minute at the end dedicated to swearing loyalty to Bormann. They also seemed to heavily feature Baldur von Schirach, who they depicted being thoughtlessly kicked the crap out of by Bowman, was still wearing that same gosh darn antique suit of armor. Thomas remembered from the old days, grinning, Thomas gave a little laugh, not with a show, but at it. He couldn't believe he ever used to like this stuff. When he was a kid, he used to feast on Nazi propaganda like a starving man on a bowl of stew. He didn't see the world so simplistically anymore. Bowman, the same dictator, dictator he had printed on his lunchbox when he was a child, was only getting older and more incompetent by the year. The country was suffering, people were dying, nothing was changing for the better, and Thomas had finally wised up to reality. Saving Germany from the Bolshevik menace, of course. Uh, oh, wait, no, uh... The stories had been told on TV were all lies, but Führer wasn't a hero, saving Germany from a Bolshevik menace. He was just an incompetent buffoon with a statistic streak no different than all the other Nazi dickheads. Thomas's mother seemed to hate Bormann too, but his father was iffy about him. They always talked down to Thomas about joining in on protests, worried he'll get himself or in the family in trouble. Getting in trouble himself didn't worry Thomas as much, but he was a little concerned about the Nazis might go after his parents if he kept demonstrating. Maybe the sick dudes would even target his little brother, Roland, if they were feeling especially awful that day. Whatever the consequences, though, Thomas knew that he was doing the right thing. Hear the doorbell ring, quickly turned out the TV, grabbed his jacket and placard, and heading out to join his friends, driving over to the protest. Someone to stick up to the fascists, and apparently it had to be them. As they drove along, Thomas and his friends heard some bootlicker praising Bowman on the radio, and broke into a chant about dr to drown him out. Bowman, Bowman, Nazis, Bowman, Bowman, bad words, bad words, breaking the chains. Cool. I'm just more worried about the GDP. Or the debt, really. We have a lot of intelligence on the Russians now. So much intelligence, I love it. There you go. Anything else? Ah, the Antica, yes. So good. Ah, wait up. Wait, search. The people's fuel shall be replaced with a tight leash. Our authority extends past the borders of the Reich proper. The aftershocks of the second night of the Long Knives have rippled throughout the Eastern Reich's commissariats and now bow to the Reich's demands without question. Meanwhile, after decades of preparation, Bowman will finally initiate the integration of Reich's commissariat Ostland and the general government into Germany. The process will be long and intense, but the Aryan race has long since learned to abandon pain. Pain is just weakness leaving the body. Six days left, that's fine with me. Alright, let's do what's the most important. Cut, cut. Very good. How's the economy doing? Look at all these civilian factories. So many. We can probably slash another one. Even though we're really not spending that much on construction at all. Like, seriously, it's almost nothing. A tight leash. Very good. And, uh, we, it's, we can't quite do that one yet. Let's grab some more logistic companies, perhaps. And another uh, Marie Graf. I'll keep you here, just because we need some people to help guard the home front, we'll say. You guys do that. You guys can do that too. A National Renaissance. The 1930s heralded the birth of the German Reich. The 50s saw economic collapse and political chaos. The 60s was a period of intersign warfare. Rebuilding and purchase to look forward, we must embrace the Reich's greatest age, the late 40s. 
A new national renaissance. She'll begin at Bowman's watchful eye, one dedicated to capturing the culture, hope, and national psychology of the immediate post-war period. Life has a series of struggles, of course, but the hardest ones are behind us. Let the people know it. Very good. Oh, we've got an entire week left. Oh, boy. Uh, let's see. We have five army XP. I would like to maybe throw in a few more support companies on some of our divisions as well. Um, hmm. um, we've made our... What is it? Helicopter's really, really good, so... I want to get to the focus tree first, and then maybe go to war with the USSR, or whatever it's called now. The Reich will stand 1,000 years, more political power stability at the end. Wow. Nice. Uh, about two weeks left for that. Well, we could try that. So, Exodus. If the Italian family aboard the plane had stared for more than five seconds at the scrawny young man sitting behind himself, they would have noticed his haggard face and gaze expression. Or glaze expression. If they had bothered to ask his name, he would have smiled faintly and introduced himself as Martin. He'd experienced the sweltering heat, the buzzing insects, and the threat of savage partisans when he signed up for the Central African Army all those years ago. He had expected to be treated differently from the others, as though his father's achievements were somehow reflected through him. Even the flattering safari trips with the jovial Reich Skumasar Mueller, though anticipated, had not truly surprised him. No. What, Barman, what Martin was not prepared for, what he could have never have been prepared for, were the horrors of the South African War. Sleepless nights in the rain as the distant sounds of gunfire tore through the air, numbing marches through the jungle as his backpack dragged him down. He'd watch his men die before his very eyes. Germans, Boers, Anglos, Americans, Africans, their blood all ran red through the dirt. Martin had killed many men with his guns, with his grenades, with his knife. How he himself was alive was still nothing less than a miracle. Now, once he had considered it so, surely the miracle would have been a sudden bullet to the head. Were it not for his pen pal, Martin would not, should have lost his mind. The only thing that dragged him through the pain and fear was the knowledge that during moments of rest he could write a new letter to his friend. When Central Africa collapsed, Martin abandoned his loyal troops, turned north, and walked. He slept in ditches and drank from streams. He hunted wild animals and hid from the roaming gangs of bandits. When he finally settled into Italian territory, pens found their way into his hands and began writing again. He, had he not reported that special connection, he would have ever would he have ever told back to the father one? Another Festus soldier returns an uncomfortable truth. Bowman swaggered into the room with a flushed face. The cabinet knew why he was late but said nothing. No one had dared question with the sudden influx of female secretaries or the extent of meeting with the film actresses and models. Bowman slumped into his chair and gestured to Gehab Klopfer. Mein Führer, I've extensively briefed the ex-minister on your preliminary grand project proposals. Klopfer spoke up. The efficiency of the party chancellor under his control had skyrocketed to astonishing heights. The expansion of the Entscheidungsnetwerk and its interesting proposal for certain... <coughs> Uh, Herman Joseph Abs replied with a cocked eyebrow. For certain, it has gone quite well so far. As a uh, as may I add, it was a space program. Volta Havel grinned without a trace of irony. I still remember watching the TV in '62 when we sent a man to the moon. It would certainly be a good distraction for the populace, Galen muttered. He was looking more tired than usual. Of course, we were looking at the next decade of Bowman coughed into his fist violently. He raised a glass to his lips but hacked again. <clears throat> Yeah, spurting water over the table. His whole body shook with every rasping cough. Eventually, he withdrew his hand in core as was discovered or covered in shiny red splotches. The Rex Ministers rose to their feet and called for a doctor, but Borman then showed up with a pound on the table. He stared at the blood. They were right, though. He needed a doctor. He still got his portrait here. There's another portrait of him in the files, but... In the game files, but... It's not here yet, so... Whatever. Pilgrimage. Martin's feet touched German soil, and he felt nothing. The father lends embrace. <clears throat> Once a woman invigorating, now felt cold and clammy to the touch. Would the arms of his siblings feel the same? Would his brothers tear themselves away from their building political careers to greet him? Would his sisters turn their attention away from the husbands and children, as were the father? His father. The most affection that man ever, ever shown him was the day Martin left for Africa. He had slapped his eldest son in the back, nodding his approval, and returned to the bulletproof car. A wave of uneasiness washed over him as he approached the customs officer. Would anger or apathy engulf his father when he learned of Martin's return? Or had the pressures of power changed him? His Ben Pell had told him enough times that all the men had the potential to change. Martin would never return to Germany were it not for the wise man's counsel. Next, a customs officer beckoned over him. Passport. That's a fake passport, Martin replied. My real name is Martin Bowman. Uh, and I'm Richard Nixon, the customs officer said without smiling. Now hand me your passport. I didn't want to get detained by the Italians, Martin explained calmly, taking out his iron cross and hanging it over. Engraved across black metal were three words. Martin Bowman Jr. <clears throat> the Hamburg protests. It started with a cluster of angry students popping with the air with the fists and screaming menacingly slogans, or meaningless slogans. According to Orpo, reports delivered directly to the fear, tensions have been simmering in the universities throughout the Reich, where toxic anti-government propaganda is dripped into the ears of naive and impressionable young Germans by their fellow students and subversive ac academics alike. As with most student protests, the marching in Hamburg began rather pathetically and looked to set to dis dissipate within the next day. Over time, however, the ranks of these protesters began to swell as more and more students' groups joined them, carrying their cardboard signs and chanting treasonous nonsense. The protests have only grown with time, and older citizens are also beginning to march down the streets of fury. 
Screeching masses wreathing through the streets of Hamburg pose no real threat to us. The German people, especially the hot-blooded hot -blooded youth, need to let off some steam every once in a while. Such protests are not entirely unheard of, and while the demonstrations in Hamburg are admittedly larger than most, this is likely due to the political climate. Those that may angrily accuse the party of suppression and purging, but their eventual boredom will lead them back to their studies and jobs, but this is but a small thorn in their side. Let them whine. These demons will grow tired of chanting in streets in due time. Resurrection. Berman never knew what to expect with Gerhard Klopfer slunk into his office, smiling faintly, arms overflowing with paperwork. <coughs> he was a trustworthy, loyal, and most importantly, completely un unambitious man. There were times when Borman wondered whether that overzealous bureaucrat worked harder than him, yet the new party chancellor never wore his emotions on his sleeve. Was he about to announce a change in weather or the outbreak of World War III? Your son has returned, mind fear. General Martin Bowman Jr. is alive and well. Oh! The chair creaked softly as Bowman leaned backwards in shock. Who wasn't expecting that? Could it be true? Was little Krunzi alive? I'd assumed de him dead. The report's all the same. He would vanish after the collapse of Central Africa. Are we sure this is isn't an imposter? He carries your son's iron cross, my fear. Clifford continued. He's been detained at customs. He placed a few photographs gently on the desk. Borman scanned him one by one in disbelief. It was him. It was Martin Jr. Krunzi, Martin, uh, Bowman muttered. My fear? I said, I, I said release him at once. Take him wherever he wants to go. Bowman scrunched the photos up and launched him into the bin. I don't have time to discuss failed generals, nor do I wish to meet any. Now leave me in peace. Life does not forgive weakness. I mean, they did really well down here. But guns and advanced anti-air equipment. C. Fliege Faust C. Does that mean like air punch C? The movement spreads. The sun bathes their faces as they make treasonous speeches to eruptions of applause. The winds chill their bones as they march down the streets, chanting against the actions of the party and the fear. The rain drenches the huge cardboard signs as they bob up and down, informing the pedestrians of the government's faults. A deadly concoction of fear, fury, and rebellion seems to course through the veins of these agitators, no matter the weather. What started as a small demonstration in Hamburg has spread the other Reich like a disease, investing many major cities and universities. The fear has instructed Werner Naumann and the Ministry of Propaganda and Public Enlightenment to completely ignore these demonstrations and focus on unifying stories instead. The party's patience has its limits. If these protests reach Germania, it would be foolish to continue turning a blind eye. Their voices will soon grow strained. Second night of the long knives? How about a third night of the long knives? I just want another, another national renaissance, man. And to cut down the national debt. I'm trying to give the next generation a better economy than what we had. Protest spread to Germania. May I, Galen, Re uh, Reinhard Galen, gestured to the simple brown box resting between the two men. Bowman nodded nonchalantly. Galen smiled politely, plucking up a thick African cigar and popped it into his mouth. I didn't take you for a cigar man, the fear smiled, feigning calmness as the chief of the Old Nung's Pulitzer eye casually took out a lighter. Bowman splotchy red hands had curled up so tightly they were turning white. Now, if these protesters are truly planning to march from Wilhelmstrasse to the Reichstag, I assume someone competent is directing them behind the scenes. You're correct, my fear. Cigarettes are far more to my taste. Galen exhaled some smoke with a slight grimace. According to our reports, it's not one, but many different groups conducting the upcoming demonstrations in Germania. Mostly students, but not all. I provided a detailed list in the document. He patted the chunky stack of papers before him with a pale hand. This is absurd, Bowman growled. I want the Opel to block up all routes to the Reichstag and to break up the process as soon as it begin co to coalesce. I won't have the Wilhelmstrasse blocked up by a petty band of miscreants, mein Führer, Galen said hesitantly. There may be a course of action that benefits us more. If we let them hold a little rally, then they will soon run out of steam. Bolt, bottled tension can be a dangerous thing. The Reichstag will be blocked off, of course, with the protests. Uh, all these protesters to let off some steam. Break up the protests. Uh, agitating. Uh, you know what? Let them clear this. Let them do that. Oh, look at this. Integrate. Ah, oh, yes, finally! The gross round program is finally paying off. Pulling in an ever closer union economically, culturally, and politically, the time has come to integrate the administration into the Reich for good. Beautiful. Infrastructure modernization? Who else can we do? Uh, I'll let the game choose. And, uh, yeah, that stuff is not bad. 82% stability? Not bad? It seems like it's taking forever to get over here. The Volkshaka blockade. Hundreds of protesters took to the street of Germania, forming a grand coalition of students, workers, and subversive agents seeking to turn public sentiment against the government. They initially gathered at the Wilhelmstrasse, gaining in size and energy until the sky was filled with streaks and signs. Despite clear instructions that they would not be allowed to march towards the Reichstag or the Volkshalle, clusters of demonstrators began to leap over blockades and outmaneuver Orpo police officers, and soon the march was proceeding as planned. Soon after breaking through the first wave of blockades, hundreds of Orpo officers were dispatched into the crowd to violently break up the march and push back the protesters to Wilhelmstrasse. With the help of fists, batons, and tear gas, the rebellious crowds were soon dispersed and forced into retreat before getting any Close to the Reichstag. Let's hope their energy is spent. Oh, I love escalation. 260. A protest returned to Wilhelmstrasse. The Führer placed a fist into his mouth and coughed heavily. His whole body began to shake until his eyes were watering. 
Uh, Bowman rasped bad words. Grabbing a glass of water and chucking it down, he gave a loud sigh as the final drop of water splashed onto his tongue, and the cigar is terrible. You don't say, Havel muttered. Bowman's eyes sliced into him like daggers, and he cleared his throat awkwardly. Excuse me, Mion Firo. You were saying that the uh, protests were larger today? Yes, Bowman shook his head incredulously and, uh, and ground a cigar into the glass ashtray, and continuing to gather Wilhelmstrasse with their placards and chants. I guess I didn't learn the lessons from yesterday. Read this. Bowman flung a piece of paper towards Havel, who definitely caught it. You see the picture? Caricatures of my face. Down with Bowman? Ingrates. Do they have any idea what I've sacrificed to bring the right to such prosperity? Certainly not, Havel sighed, rubbing his dark room glasses. My fear, as you know, I've been working overtime for the past few weeks, sleeping and dining in my office. I think I'm going to bring out some of my some of my work home. He smiled gently. I miss the sights of Cologne. I miss my wife's face. Yes, yes, Bowman said dismissively. Did you know that Galen wants to allow the protests to rally again? He says they'll run out of energy soon, but I don't think they should be allowed to take the streets again. But perhaps he's right. What do you think? He's right. They'll run out of steam soon. They'll run out of steam soon. Hopefully. Orpel dismantled the protests. In a matter of days, protests have erupted once more at Rallhamstrasse, more fierce and violent than ever before. As Orpel attempted to control the situation, the protests began to explode into clusters of thugs who ran the streets with fury, throwing bricks through shop windows, smashing up cars, and beating up armed, armed citizens. Restaurants and government buildings were alike were broken into by swarms of protesters who looted and trashed every place they entered. One shop was lit on fire, though it was quickly dealt with by the fire brigade. Whatever sparked the violence and the chaos did not just affect the minds of the protesters, enraged at the destruction and lacking any coherent orders, hundreds of Orpo officers began to break the rights apart with greater intensity than before. Men were tackled to the ground and beaten to a bloody pulp with heavy batons, women were dragged away from the looting by the hair, and even the peaceful protesters were being kicked into the ground by the jackboots of Orpo officers. Desperate times called for desperate measures high on the old men pull outside. They acted with unexpected exultry, making the uh, protests ever more agitated. Well, what do you expect? Then they started attacking, like, innocent civilians' shops and such? I mean, that's not a good way for, you know, protests to conduct themselves. You're going to lose support. All I want to do is just go to war with the communists in the East. That's all I want to do, man. And slash the the that, so... Maintenance companies? Ah, officer put. Oh, Orpo officers murdered. A few days after the mayhem and the Wilhelmstrasse riots, the protests appear to be dying down thanks to the instinctive action of the zealous Orpo, many of whom have been awarded for the bravery, the few roaming eight gangs of looters are being rounded up with efficiency, and neither protests, peaceful protests, are falling in number. However, intimidation is not causing not cause of bullying anger coursing through the anti-government subversives to evaporate into thin air. Several shootouts have been broken out through Germania between violent protesters and Orpo patrols resulting in the deaths of a few brave officers. As if this wasn't violent enough, a few cowards have even begun gunning down officers in drive-by shootings, and throughout the city, violence is, against the police is increasing rapidly, from thuggish violence, of uh, thuggish assaults to knife attacks. However, it must be noted that anti orpo violence is not unheard of in times of protest. We mourn the fallen, but celebrate victory over the protests. Both things are escalating, and that makes it a lot more interesting. More signal companies, anybody? More initiative? Yes, please. Very good. I just want to get to a national renaissance, man. And it towards greater projects. The post purge restructuring of the German society is completed. Now Borman turns his eyes towards larger projects, glorious new initiatives that will cement his legacy forever. The global superpowers will languish in the shadow of German Germany's glory, and prestige as they gradually disintegrate into the sandstorm of insignificance. Many space initiatives await us all. Mighty Wehrmacht reforms await us all. Boundless scientific discoveries await us all as well. Reich's minister Havel is missing. In an act of defiance, sure to shock the nation to its core, Rex Minister he Walter Havel and his wife, Blanda, have disappeared from their residence in Cologne to what appears to have an act of kidnapping. The home of Walter Havel, who has long served the Reich as its Rex Minister for Foreign Affairs, has broken into a completely and ransacked. While the circumstances of his disappearance can be fully determined yet, the fear has been informed that it is likely connected to the recent anti-government protests, with Cologne itself having s seen several large protests and riots akin to those seen in Germania. Every available agent is on the scene, and the chief of the Old Nungspol Tsai, Reinhard Galen, himself, is personally leading the investigation. Whichever disgusting little degenerate dare to lay their hands on a Reich's minister will have their hand torn from their body, their neck wrapped up in barbed wire for all of Germania to see. We will exterminate these kidnappers like rats. What did I make? Oh, are these divisions to help put down the protests? That's nice. That's costing us more money, though. Oh, minus 13 billion? Not bad. Not bad. Oh, that's so long. So many days. Uh, we are still a professional army. It's not going down. A terrorist claim responsibility. It was an ugly crack as a wooden pencil snapped in half. Bowman looked down in fury and thrust it into his table, where it clattered and rolled over to Reinhard Galen, who waited patiently for a response. Bowman had barely slept over the last two days. Volta was missing. He was a loyal and tenacious man who had grown into something of a friend over the last decade. A slightly dim man, of course, but a friend nonetheless. Just as owners are friends with the pets. The RAF, Bowman eventually growled in response. The Rota Armee Fraction. Uh, Galen replied, sliding a document across the desk, remnants of the 60s students' movement, the ones who held Speer up as the savior of Germany. As you can tell by the name, they claimed to be communist partisans hoping to spread the teachings of Marx throughout the Reich. 
So they got so tired of your useless Orpal hunting for them that they claimed responsibility for the kidnapping themselves, Borman replied. Staring at Galen with his steely eyes, the man did not respond. Oh, Borman opened the document and frowned. Demands? That can't be serious. He scanned the list before slamming the documents closed and staring once more into Galen's eyes. I want Havel found. We'll never give in to these demands. The RAF ultimatum. These are the demands of the RAF of the tyranny or the tyrant of the Germany at moment. One, the enemy of the people of the National Socialist German Workers Party will be dissolved with immediate effect to allow for the people's government. Two, the crypto SS or the Nungspolzai will be disbanded with immediate effect to allow for people's police force. Three, mega corporations such as IG Falcon will be shut down and its profits distributed to workers of Germany. Four, all laws exploiting the workers and farmers will be rescinded with immediate effect. Five, the supplementary list of imprisoned comrades will be released from the KZs with immediate effect. Six, the institutions of the National Socialist Regime will be handed over to the RAF with immediate effect. Six. Oh, no, that's the institutions one. The seven, uh, the Reichstag Fire Decree of 1933 will be rescinded with immediate effect. Eight, the Enabling Act of 1933 will, will be rescinded with immediate effect. Nine, the tyrant Martin Bormann will, be dis will dismantle the government and resign from power. Ten, Martin Bormann, Gerhard Klopfer, Reinhard Gainlein, and the supp supplementary list of Nazi scum will surrender themselves to the RAF forces with immediate effect. You have 14 days to meet these demands, or the tyrant Valta Havel and his Nazi pig's wife will be executed. Our ridiculous demands, well. Oh, and we annex Poland. Now that's what I'm interested in. Annexing Poland. Uh, good. And all of a sudden, yes. Yes. No wonder we got more GDP and such. They want Bormann to step down. Oh, that's not bad. <clears throat> no wonder we got more GDP. Yeah, and better deficit. Looking pretty good. Yeah, I don't know. Time runs short. The RAF has, RAF's deadline is fast, fast approaching. The Orpo has failed to relocate Raksmissa Batahevel or his wife. Every clue leads down the wrong path. Every lead brings them to a dead end. Behind every closed door is in a brick wall, mocking them for such failure. Time is running out. Valta and Blanda's lives depend on Galen's investigation. The reputation of the Orpo demands on Galen's investigation. The stability of the Reich depends on Galen's investigation. Naturally, the fears refuse to accept any single demand within the insane ultimatum, which is torn to shreds and described as degenerate. We'll never give in to these Bolshevik scum. Yeah, that's a bit extreme to, you know, demand communist or Marxist stuff in the land of National Socialism. I'm just saying, man, like, that seems a bit extreme. But then again, if negotiations, you don't want to show your hand too soon. So weapons, seven, huh? Hmm, I wonder if Burgundy's up to this. They probably are up to this, trying to cause student demonstrations and riots and such and stuff like that. One final lead, just when all seemed lost, new clues have miraculously risen to the surface of this murky investigation. Keelan and Ordnung's boat's eye discovered a trustworthy lead that tracks Rex Mr. Havel and his wife to Cologne, where they are potentially being held captive in a warehouse in the town of Mühlenbach. Time is running out, we have a mere day to go before the RAF make good on their vile promise to execute these two hostages. Our most elite officers in Cologne will be sent to this warehouse to conduct a swift raid of the premises. Havel is counting on us, the Fear is counting on us, the German people are counting on us. We will not let them down. Initiate Unternehmen Café. Uh, just in case, I'll send you guys. Oh, wait, is that why we got those soldiers? We integrated them. There you go. Head over here. The raids. Holes held his breath and tensed his entire body, as he had done many times before just a few hours ago. He'd been preparing for bed, as usual duty called. called. The night air was chilling his fingers to the bone as they firmly wrapped themselves around the submachine gun. His men were in position. They were ready. Horst gave the signal. Siegfried stepped in front of the door and delivered a mighty kick, sending a crash ring inwards. Horst slid through the open door with his men tightly behind him, scanning the darkened room with a flashlight of a guest's gun. It was empty. Two doors waited before them. He signaled for his men to split up, crept in rapid stance towards the left side door, which was partly open. He pushed through and swept his light across the room with a professional swiftness. A familiar metallic stench infiltrated his nostrils, something shone in the light as it passed over the floor, something wet, something crimson. Horse lifted up his gun higher and swore softly. Like a pair of pale islands in a sea of blood, two bodies were sent in their small metal chairs without moving. They were both naked, a man and woman, each had a hole in the high inside of their heads. We found the Reichsminister. We could not save him. Oh, crap. Oh, oh, man. Oh, we wanted to get on him in Germany. No, that stuff down here. The German eagle falls once again. He was murdered, huh? So sad. Well, uh, well, I guess with the focus tree being cut down, cut off from there, so do we, I'm doing greater projects. Uh, I guess I just wait for that that one to complete. That's a little bit ahead of time. Let's grab this one. Do we really need these guys? What's the GDP like? Minus 33 million. Uh, well, with you guys. I'm going to convert you to infantry division. I'm going to throw you guys over here because we could use some more divisions for that. You guys. 
convert. Oh, right there. There we go. And we'll convert one of you guys as well back to normal infantry. Thank you. Very good. And disbanded. Yep, this is definitely interesting, I will say that. We get more political power towards greater projects, which would be nice. It's unfortunate that Havel was murdered. There's not much we can really do. Oh! Build, build, build. I already maximized this out, or whatever. So many different small little tiles here. Very good, my friends. Towards greater projects. And then, Ottoman Germany. The trauma of the last decade from the Burger Creek to the destruction of the Wehrmacht plot on the second night of the Long Knives has been simmering under the effects. Or, or simmering under, come on, the surfaces of Germany like a stifled scream. The kidnapping and murdering of ex Mr. Walter Havel has ignited the population's restrained anguish into an eruption of brutal violence. All across the Reich, rioting and terrorist attacks are exploding with increasing frequency. And the House of Cards Bormann is so carefully built up is finally crumbling before his very eyes. Autumn has arrived in Germany, and it won't be long until winter is to envelop, to envelop the nation. So is that it for the campaign? Like, things are collapsing. But at this point, like, there should be an event saying that Borman is going to commit a third night of long knives, but more like a great purge towards the civilian populace. So, we'll see what happens. So a bloodstained collar, the murder of Valta Hevel had sent the whole Reich spinning into madness and disarray. Galen had failed him intentionally. Perhaps the sneering Obs was involved. Was Valta even truly dead? Bowman snapped himself out of the ridiculous thoughts. He was so tired, so very tired. He had barely slept a wink every time he closed his eyes. He saw Havel's naked body covered in blood, and whenever they were opened, he feared an assassin would lunge off from the shadows of his bedroom. On the rare instant, sleep had Bowman in its grasp. A series of an agonizing coughs exploding from his lungs would soon tear him into wakefulness. How he had suffered for the Reich. Decades of hard work and stress. Decades of scheming and manipulation. Decades of sacrifice, both literal and figurative. Did he not deserve a break? Did he not deserve to indulge in his passions and revel in his power? He had crafted a nation fit to last a thousand years. Was a thousand years not enough for a legacy of Borman? He trickled spitefully. Perhaps God really was real. It's bad news, I'm afraid. The doctor turned around. Bowman snapped himself out of his thoughts and listened with grim intensity. You have terminal lung cancer. At most, I would give you two years left to live. I'm sorry, my fair. Malt Bowman sat in deathly silence. He pulled out a cigar, lit it up, and took a deep puff. He blew the smoke out of his nose and into the doctor's face. I've made up my mind, he said with the glazed dies, a thousand years is not enough. A thousand years will not be enough. As a fear's health deteriorates, that Reich enters its greatest period of crisis yet. With things looking even more grim, autumn's winds blow, who knows, and who knows how long until the hostile cards comes crashing down. From the entire Bormann team, thank you for playing. We hope you enjoyed it. Cool. And that's technically the end of... Well, this part of TNL, in which, from my understanding, when TNL 2 comes out, they actually might have a second start date, so thank you to everyone who developed this. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you very much, as well as our former members. Cool. Thank you for playing. So that's the end of the campaign, but how about we have a little bit of fun before Borman Daddy dies uh, with the so Russian Soviet Socialist Republic. So here we are, everyone. We have just called in our allies for the German-Russian War, just because I've never done this before. And I use consequences to do this, but I don't really care. So we immediately begin. We got our, our allies in as well, including Iran. So I forgot that we, that we had an ally. This is actually our focus, or our faction, I should say. We're looking pretty good. The UK never joined the OFN. Norway did. Sweden, of course, didn't join us. Neither did Finland, but we should do relatively okay. So seeing as infantry, I'm not too concerned about infantry doing well, but the tanks in the center, as well as the... Oh, the helicopter's not even over here yet. Oh, crap. That's not good. Oopsie. Oh, well. I'm not too concerned about this that much, as you can probably tell. Um, better upgrades for anti-air stuff? Sure, why not? Losses. I mean, they have 94 divisions, 5,000 losses. We've got 257 losses and 117 divisions. We have more divisions than them. We're pulling our full might behind this. They've got a lot of guys. We have been doing a lot of intelligence stuff. Uh, they've got some good stockpiles of stuff, though, but I don't really care too much. Uh, we don't know that much about their stuff, but that's fine, whatever. Maybe we should do that, actually. Uh, we're actually doing economy stuff. So. Upgrades in progress. Um, oh, we're, we're suffering a little bit down here. But then again, it's infantry. What do you expect? Attacking. It, I, it didn't really matter to me. Come on, guys. I don't know why you took this long to get over there. Uh, the southern portion is mostly just being flooded by our soldiers. Which is pretty much what I expect. If we lose less than 100,000 manpower, I'll be kind of okay with that. Wow, we've already lost... we lost a lot of guys. They've lost a lot more guys, though. Eh, 200,000. You know, they finally put Russia in its place. That's the most important thing. Oh. Try to modernize this in 72? Okay, cool. Alright, good. Finally. Oh, they were doing last stand here. Ah, that's, no wonder we're taking so many casualties. So, I'm going to say maybe less than a quarter million. Maybe, maybe not. They're, they're 
their division count is definitely dropping, which is good to see. Um, 83 divisions, 102,000 102, manpower. Ooh, nice. Very good, very good. Obviously, having just doing it like this is not a very smart idea, but, you know, whatever. Our guys can't move fast enough. We lost 103,000. They've lost a lot of other guys. This will spell the end, literally, of Russia. Come on, helicopters. Keep going, keep going. You're doing a great job so far. The ultimate demand sudden and alarming news comes from the enemy force. Apparently, in response to the course of war, they sent an ultimatum. Cease fighting immediately or be destroyed with nuclear weapons. However, we cannot be sure how serious they are in terms of the threat. We can either attempt to end this conflict and make peace with our foes. The call of their bluffing target. It's up to you. Yeah, they're, they're bluffing. There's, there's, there probably is a good amount of nuclear weaponry that the Agoda has. Ah, there we go. Oh, so they did cause nuclear weaponry. I, sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. It's highly recommend you play or switch to two to three game time speed. Go take him out, take him out. Attack warning, extremely alarming news. Radar and air defense systems have also reported nuclear missiles launching from silos and also reported enemy bombers forces taking off. All trajectories predict they are heading for our nation and it is very clear that a similar response should, must be made in order to protect our nation. Launch everything we have. So be it. And there we go, it's nuclear warfare. Honestly, it really depends for uh, who we have. So, oh, there we go. What a great way to end this campaign, right? Obviously, this is not part of the canon. Goodbye, GGR. Do we not have anything to shoot down nukes? It is the 70s, early 70s. No, but uh, actually, there's a lot of lag. You're going to see that. Oh, there goes a lot of black splotches. But so is Russia, so. Hey, look, we got some factories to use. Nice. I mean, our guys are still moving in. Rax Protector out of Ruslan. Oh, they're part of the Ukraine, too. But, you know, I... It's almost impossible to tell if the enemy has nukes or not, especially Russia, since I guess it's, it's 72. They didn't have time to go through the focus tree. But I don't know how much Yagoda actually focuses on nukes. Since some Russian unifiers, by the time they get to 72, they barely start doing a nuclear program, so... Oh my goodness, I was lagging so hard. Come on. Let me pause the game. Um, I don't want to fade in and fade out again, so... Okay, come on. Uh... Well, you know what? I'm, I'm not going to even bother with it. You know what's going to happen. A lot of nukes are going on. Oh, thank you. My god, that took too long. Uh, how did Germany get nuked and not enough of Russia? Regardless, that's the end of the campaign for me here. I'm pretty much done with Barman. Um, if you enjoyed it, please consider leaving a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below. Recommend to me other um, nations to play in until you know. And it looks like it wasn't just Germany and Russia that we were nuking each other. Oh, well, that makes why it's lagged so hard. Uh, most of America's gone. Regardless, thanks for watching. Have a great, great, great rest of your day.